Welcome to this uh, second Logic Brick State Machine tutorial. Uh, this one covering the advanced settings. Um, uh, yeah, these uh, allow you better control over uh, state changes. Um, I strongly recommend that you watch the State Machine Basic tutorial first uh, if you haven't seen it uh, at this point. Um, yeah, as an overview, I'm going to talk about uh, things uh, that relate to saving the scene uh, when you have a state machine. Um, then the uh, switch state trigger, which allows you to uh, explicitly switch to a particular state via trigger. Then there's a feature called uh, trigger sync that helps uh, synchronizing uh, multiple state machines or uh, animations with your state machine. Um, then there's a cooldown feature that allows you to uh, basically remove a particular state temporarily from, uh, from the state machine uh, so it can't be chosen again. Um, and uh, the disabling states goes in a similar direction. And last but not least, I'm going to talk about the multiple choice system that um, allows you to uh, react to user inputs and, and based on that, switch to, uh, switch to different states. Okay, let's go. Um, so uh, we got a scene here with an empty atom and on that I placed a state machine. It uh, doesn't have any states uh, yet, so let's create one. Uh, let's increase the duration here a bit. Um, so 13 to 5, 15 seconds. And uh, yeah, we can just press a switch state to switch to that particular state. If I would save the scene now, it would save. I'm in state one and I'm at, at a particular time uh, that goes down here. Of course, the trouble with that is uh, time progresses. So it's kind of hard to you have your scene at, uh, exactly at the uh, state you really want to save at. So that's where the uh, time paused here comes handy. Um, so you can just pause uh, the timer for, for the state. Uh, so if I switch to this now, uh, I just end up at whatever the, the random duration was rolled for this. Uh, so in this case, 14 seconds. And you have all the time in the world to get the rest of your scene uh, into the state you want to save in. Um, uh, this this checkbox is not saved. That's why it said, says not saved here. So uh, as soon as you load your scene, it would uh, just run normally. Um, an interesting point is that um, if you would save now and load again on enter for state one, it's not called because it was already in that state when you saved it. So it already entered. Um, this is actually a behavior that changed with Logic Brick 7, uh, where on, on the enter was always called on scene load, which caused kind of some problems in some scenes. Um, so yeah, make sure you always got the newest version of Logic Bricks because newer is better, obviously. Um, uh, uh, let's reset the duration here. Um, uh, another interesting thing is that if you have a state that doesn't have a transition here, you can actually switch back to the uh, null state, the non-existing state. Um, uh, this means uh, on exit is actually called for state one, but you just don't enter any new state. And uh, as soon as you switch by whatever means to a new state, then on enter on that state is called again. Uh, you can also save in this null state uh, like it's now, and it would just work as you would expect. Um, yeah, the next thing on our list is the uh, switch state trigger, which allows us to explicitly switch to a particular state. Um, I got an empty atom here again with a state machine on it, and this time also a button. So um, let's just add two states. Uh, for the uh, second state here, uh, I'm adding a transition back to state one. Um, um, then I'm going to the button and set up a trigger for the empty atom with the state machine on it and we choose a switch state here. Um, here you can just enter the name of the state you want to switch in. Um, it has to be typed exactly the same as you have it here, um, as, as you typed it here. Um, if you're in desktop mode, the easiest way to just click here once um, which highlights the, uh, the the name and you can just control C to copy it 
and uh, insert it here again uh, with Control V. And um, uh, yeah, it, it as I said, it has to be exactly the same. So if, for example, there's a space here, it's not not the same name for for it's a dump plugin. So yeah, it has to be exactly the same. Um, okay, press OK here, and let's go to the state machine UI to see what's going on. So if I press the button now, it would switch to state two. And from there, because there's a transition here, go to state one. And because that state doesn't have any transition, it just goes to no state at all. And um, this is that's basically pressing this button now is the equivalent of simply selecting state two here and pressing this switch state button. It's exactly the same. Um, um, and other interesting detail is that while you are in state two, you can also press the button and it basically resets the clock here. You exit state two technically and call on enter triggers again uh, for, for while you are in the same state. That works too. Um, yeah, let's continue with the uh, trigger sync. Um, I've uh, basically reset the scene. Uh, again, we have the empty atom with the state machine, doesn't have any states yet, and we have our button again. Um, so I'm adding two states again. Uh, to a state two, get a transition back to state one. And um, yeah, the new thing now is that I'm enabling advanced options here. So I get this wait for trigger sync checkbox, which I can enable. And um, yeah, let's go to the button, add a trigger there, empty atom, state machine, and uh, trigger sync. Um, doesn't have any parameters, uh, just yeah. Just a thing you can call. Um, so what does it do? Um, if I go to uh, state two, let's, let's press uh, switch state here. Timer is running as normal, except if the timer runs out, we are not switching to state one, although there's a transition here. It's waiting for trigger sync. So it's waiting for this trigger sync signal from coming somewhere from in, in your scene. So in this case, if I press the button because I hooked this up, uh, we continue normal with the transition, go to state one and from there to nothing. Uh, yeah, just for good measure, do it again, switch to state one, uh, time is running, uh, waiting for trigger sync, I press the button, it continues. Um, yeah, what is this useful for? Um, so for example, you might want to wait for an animation to finish in your scene or something like that before you continue with your state. Um, yeah, maybe uh, you want to wait uh, for some user input, like here, pressing a button. Uh, yeah, another thing could be what I have done in some of my scenes is just setting up a random timer that emits a trigger sync, uh, like, like every few seconds. And uh, that makes all the state machines and also idle process, which is also a state machine, all act and switch that to the states uh, simultaneously. Although it's random timing, they all have the same random timing that way. Um, uh, so that can be a useful thing to do. Uh, so they, they seem to act all in unison, although they're actually independent systems. Um, um, yeah, um, what's the benefit of uh, this over using the switch state where you specifically switch to a particular state? You could do this as well. You could switch, set the um, uh, the time to infinite and just wait for the button to switch to state one in this case, right? Um, the, the benefit is that the button does not need to know in which state the state machine is in. So you could be in several different states, the button doesn't need to know. Uh, so that can simplify your setup a lot. Um, uh, another interesting thing is that uh, if I switch to the state and while the timer is running and I press the button multiple times, uh, the signal is simply ignored. It's only listening for this when it's actually waiting for trigger sync. So now it continues. Um, if you have multiple of those trigger sync signals in your scene, maybe you have, uh, say, a looping animation that, like, at some position in the loop, emits this trigger sync all the time, um, but you don't want to listen to it all the time. Uh, so your state machine might be confused, especially in a complex scene. Uh, you might have a different state that's unrelated to that particular animation. You actually want to listen to something else. Um, so what you can do is um, add a filter 
uh, so you can define what you are listening to. Um, one particular way of doing this, uh, there might be other ways, is just using a relay plugin. Uh, relay. Um, and um, basically relaying your trigger sync signal to this relay. So I'm adding a trigger for the state machine again during the trigger sync here. Uh, then uh, I'm disabling this accept trigger, which basically means when this is off, triggering the relay doesn't do anything. When it's on, it just does its normal actions. So you can turn on, on and off the relay. Um, for the button, I'm changing the trigger I had here. Instead of uh, trigger syncing the, the state machine directly, I'm triggering the relay instead. So, so everything is going to the relay. Um, and let's go back to the state machine for the state. So basically for this particular state, uh, when we are entering the state, we can enable the relay to say specifically we are listening for this particular trigger sync. Uh, enable it. And when we are exiting the state, um, also relay again, uh, except trigger and turn it off. So uh, yeah, this way uh, we are only listening for this button in the scene. Uh, of course, this is a demo scene, there is nothing else, but in the complex scene, you might have multiple of those sources. And uh, yeah, this way you can particularly listen to uh, that button. Um, so uh, let's switch state. And um, now it would be enabled and uh, waiting for trigger sync so I can press the button, although it's going to the relay. Um, yeah, the uh, next thing on our list of uh, things to talk about is the uh, cooldown. Uh, I did reset the scene again. We have an empty state machine again. Um, this time I'm gonna add uh, three different states, one, two, and three. Um, from state one, I'm adding a transition to state two and three. So basically from state one, we have a 50-50 chance to go either to state two or three. And uh, the other two states just go back to state one. Um, yeah. Um, then I'm just to speed things up, I'm reducing the time a bit for all the states to two seconds. Um, yes. And uh, now the actual uh, thing I want to show is uh, for state three, I'm enabling the advanced options and set a cooldown of, uh, let's say 15 seconds. Um, so what is this going to do? Um, when uh, we would switch to state one, we would randomly decide whether to go to state two or three. If we decide to go to state three, we wait uh, two seconds because the duration here is two seconds and we go back to state one. But when exiting the state three, we're setting a cooldown of 15 seconds. That means that uh, basically for those 15 seconds, the uh, state is removed from all those transition lists here. So state un state one could only go to state two. The only exception would be if uh, because of other cooldowns, all the states are removed, then it would simply fall back to the state with the uh, smallest cooldown uh, or the smallest remaining time until it's active again. Um, so basically this, this temporarily disables uh, states. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's just try this. Uh, we switch to state. Wait two seconds. It goes to two. Nothing, nothing special. Um, and we go to state three. Cooldown activates. And now for the next 15 seconds, we can only go to state two. State three is out of the, of the selection. Uh, yeah, let's keep this running for a while. Um, and eventually the cooldown is over and we would be able to switch to state three again. Of course, there's still there, there we go. Um, of course, there's still the 50-50 chance, so this wouldn't immediately happen. Um, yeah, well, what's the purpose of this? Um, obviously, um, while this is an independent random decision for a player, it doesn't appear random if uh, things are chosen multiple times in a row, if the same thing is chosen. 
Um, so actually, to make it appear more random for the player, we make it less random by using those cooldowns. So you can basically prevent a repetition of some particular state for a while. Um, uh, yeah. Um, another feature of this cooldown is that you can set the cooldown manually by trigger. So I can take my button here, get the uh, state machine, and uh, get the set on cooldown trigger. And I just enter the name of the state, uh, that was state tree. Um, this is ex uh, exactly the same as um, as we would uh, exit the state if you weren't actually in that state. Uh, so it would basically set the cooldown again to 15 seconds. Um, okay, what would you use this uh, set on cooldown for? Um, so imagine you have a state machine for your scene and has a bunch of states uh, just displayed by this cloud thing here. And um, let's say you have uh, some sub section of your scene, maybe even a sub scene. Um, so you go to uh, some some in state uh, as transition into that part of the scene. Uh, in there you have other states go back and forth uh, at random. It may take a while, you don't know exactly how long it takes. And eventually there is an outgoing state and you transition back to the role of the scene. Um, the problem with this is if you want a cooldown for going into the subsection of, of, the, of the scene, uh, it doesn't make sense to set it uh, on the ingoing state because on exit here, you don't know how long you will be in here. So it, it would be uh, difficult to, to know a particular time. Uh, uh, so actually you want it to set it when uh, in the outgoing state. That's where you can use this trigger. Basically on the on exit of that out state, you can call set on cooldown with the name of the ingoing state to set it cooldown for the entire branch. Um, so yeah, that, that this is a way how you can uh, use cooldown for entire branches of, of your state machine. Um, a feature that's very similar to the uh, cooldown is the enabling and disabling of states. Um, so let's look at the state machine again. Uh, here I have three states, but uh, yeah, for our first state, let's enable advanced options. And in every state has this enabled for transitions uh, checkbox. So if this is enabled, everything functions as normal. But uh, if you disable it, this particular state is uh, essentially removed from all the transition lists. Uh, of all other states. Um, uh, to help you a bit, uh, actually the state name turns red here in the transition list, also uh, here. Um, uh, so you can set this by hand here, uh, but also you can set this at any time by a trigger. Um, so uh, we, let's add a trigger for the button, um, state machine, and uh, we got set state enables, and then you just send a uh, type the state name as usual or copy paste it. Um, uh, you can disable using set state, state disabled and you can also enable or disable all of your states um, if you want to change a large amount of states or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, it, it has very similar um, uh, use cases as the uh, cooldown. You can simply disable or enable branches uh, in your, your state machine. Um, uh, I also use it uh, for, for debugging purposes. If you want to focus your work on a particular part of a scene, uh, you can disable the other parts just to uh, make sure you don't accidentally transition to some other uh, sub-scene or something like that. Um, yeah, so that can be very helpful when, when building uh, complex scenes. Um, yeah, so uh, for the uh, last thing today, uh, I want to talk about the multiple choice feature of the uh, state machine. Uh, again, I have a fresh scene, uh, just two buttons that don't do anything at this point, and again, our empty atom that has a state machine uh, and not have any states at this point. So yeah, we're going to add some uh, states. In fact, we're going to add four states, so one, two, three, and four. Uh, the last state I'm going to rename to this side because that's where our multiple choice is going to happen. Um, 
Uh, so four states, uh, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, and the side state. And we're gonna enable advanced options, of course. Uh, we already talked about the other features here, enable transitions, trigger sync, and cooldown. But what we haven't talked about is the uh, selected choice dropdown here. So um, in fact, this is uh, a way to switch between different transition lists for every state. So far, we only used the default list, the default timeout. Uh, it's basically the transition list that's used when the state uh, timer runs out. So the, the three to five seconds in this case, we want to do what uh, happens um, in this transition list. Let's say when this timer, uh, when nothing, no, there is no user input, we want to go to state three. So um, that, that we have seen that multiple times by now. Um, but um, what you can do is have more transition lists. So let's have, use the choice A transition list um, and say when we uh, have choice A, we want to go to state one and for choice B, we're going to go to state two. Um, the question would be now, how do you actually switch to a different transition list? Um, so uh, I'm uh, yeah, you can do that by trigger. Uh, that essentially means we go to our button, for example, and um, uh, go to our state machine here. Of course, instead of a button, um, we could uh, use speech recognition, or it could be uh, some something you touch in your scene, or some kind of some kind of other user input. Um, but yeah, in the end. What we need to trigger on our state machine is set choice A or B or whatever choice we want. In this case, it's our A button. So let's use uh, set choice A. And the same for the B button here. Um, empty atom state machine and uh, set choice uh, B. Um, yes, back to our state machine. Um, for the other states, I all have them go back to um, the um, the side state when they time out. So there is no multiple choice happening for those uh, timeout and back to the side state, and also here back to the side state. And for the side state itself, I'm increasing the time a bit, um, maybe something like ten seconds. And um, yeah, so we switch to that state. And uh, by default, nothing happens. We just time out after 10 seconds and we set it to go to the state tree. There we go. And um, yeah, so that's what we have seen multiple times by now. And uh, because we hooked those uh, buttons to the uh, set choice, I can just press set choice A and we go with the uh, choice A transition list, which just says go to state one. And the same with uh, choice B we go to state two. Um, so uh, that, that's one trigger you can use. Um, that's this uh, set choice A and so on. But there's also set choice A and wait. Um, let's use that and also for the other button. Uh, B wait. Um, back to the state machine. Um, if I press set choice A now, nothing happens directly. But once the timer runs out, we actually go to state one. Um, so Basically, we remembered that the last the last choice we made was A, so we going um, with that transition list. Um, um, let's wait for a new decision here. There we go. So if I press set choice once and then press decide differently and go with choice B, we only remember the last choice that was made by the player. So we go for uh, state two in this case. Um, yeah, to have a bit better example what you can do with uh, multiple choice, um, let's have a look at my uh, Cyber Night scene uh, I released a couple of weeks ago. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a scene with uh, two characters and I have uh, some uh, speech bubble dialogue between those. So I can press start here, girl says something. Um, and uh, basically you can choose the response, what you want to say. Um, maybe we choose this one and yeah, guys, there's what was on the button and uh, basically girl responds different things depending on what you chose and you yeah could reach different parts in the scene. Um, 
uh, yeah, it, it's around a small scene. It wasn't just a demo, but uh, it shows what you could do here. Um, yeah, let's have a look at how this works. Um, um, so there is a atom here that's called um, dialog control, and um, uh, yeah, it has a state machine. Uh, so, for example, let's look at uh, state number four. Um, switch to that. Um, so this particular state, let's pause it for the moment. Uh, on on enter, it does nothing else but then trigger the uh, speech bubble on the girl, saying something with a particular lifetime for, for the uh, speech bubble, five seconds in this case, with some uh, text here. And from there goes to another line, uh, just so the, the, if you have uh, multiple speech bubbles that are supposed to be in a row, uh, so have uh, the uh, state four dialog one and state four dialog two, and they just um, come after each other. So this triggers another speech bubble. Um, but once this is done, after another four seconds, we go to the state multiple choice uh, for for our state four. This is this one, and um, What's happening here is um, we setting text for both of the buttons and also enable both buttons. So this is simply atom control on and text setting some text on the button. And um, yeah, the buttons themselves, um, if we look at the trigger here, that's simply doing set choice A for uh, on our state machine. Um, and um, that's the benefit of using the, the this multiple choice system over using the switch state trigger again uh, that we've shown at the beginning of this tutorial. Uh, the buttons do not need to know in which state you are in. The, the trigger is always the same. They just trigger set choice A and the state machine decides what to do with that. Um, so that makes the setup a lot easier. Uh, otherwise, you would need a different button for every uh, dialog you have and, and, and then you end up with lots of buttons. Um, so instead, I'm just using the state machine to set the text, um, and at the end of the uh, of this choice stage, so when you click the button, uh, we just turn the buttons off in on exit. Um, uh, of course, uh, if you don't react in time, we don't make a choice. Uh, that's also a choice. Uh, so we use the default timeout and go to some other state. In this case, state two. Um, what happens if you press a button, then we would go to uh, choice A, for example, which uh, just redirects to a state four response A and for the other button choice B with a response B state. And um, those states essentially on in, in their on enter, they uh, trigger some uh, speech bubble on the guy with essentially the same text that was on the button. Um, and uh, also speech of a lifetime, of course. And uh, yeah, for a duration of, in this case, uh, five seconds, they just go to yet another state, uh, state seven dialogue, where the girl responds with some matching uh, text on its own. Um, okay, if you make a complex scene like that with lots of states, um, it really helps to make uh, some kind of plan before you start. Um, so you could do that simply with a pen and paper, uh, or you could use some uh, some diagram tool, uh, like I did here. Uh, basically, um, writing all the lines and uh, deciding from which state you go to which other state, and so on. Um, because otherwise, you just get rather confused. Um, and also, um, yeah, with so many states, you really need to enforce some kind of uh, naming scheme for you your states, uh, like I had with this, uh, that, that all the states that belong to number four are called state four or something. Um, and yeah, when you had so many states, uh, they are all kind of similar. They all use the same triggers and so on. So it's really helpful to use that uh, duplicate button of the state machine. So all you need to do is, yeah, duplicate it, enter the, um, the different text and maybe a different time um, that, that's used for that state, but otherwise they are all more or less identical. Um, yeah, of course you have to update the transitions between the states. Um, yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully got some ideas uh, what you can do with the state machine. Um, yeah, have fun.